Hey, good morning. Welcome to our final The Great Conversation discussion. I'm hoping today to go over a ton of stuff, share kind of some of my last final thoughts on uh, our responsibilities being readers and just I'm just going to kind of give you a whole bunch of stuff that I think is cool and important. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the whole history of every good book. But the truth is that you as a reader, as a thinker, as an engager in, in your political environment, your social environment, your community, these are just good places to start. We call it the great conversation because we are connecting thoughts throughout time. And if we don't ever go back in time to visit those thoughts, then we lose out on those thoughts. So much of our American Western history, our culture is based on these ideas that if we erase them, if we get rid of them, if we ignore them, if we forget them, then we will lose our foundation. And that's a scary thought because what happens if a foundation uh, crumbles, then the entire edifice crumbles. Just like if the foundation of your home was removed, your home could not stand. Our culture cannot survive if we don't look at the ideas of the past and take the best ideas and try to improve on the worst ideas. So go back all the way to the beginning. You got to you know, go back to Plato, go back to Aristotle, Aesop and Aesop's fables, fun, good place to start. Uh, Virgil with the Aeneid. Ovid, Metamorphosis, Beowulf, great story. If you're lucky as 12th graders, you'll get to read this, uh, one of the first great English narratives. Even though this here is not what you would consider English, it is considered Old English, and it is definitely the, the great grandfather to the language that we are using today. Uh, Dante Alighieri with the Divine Comedy, talking about heaven and hell and purgatory. Chaucer, the Canterbury Tales, some very funny writing, some good writing. Um, I hope you read some of those. Shakespeare, of course, we did Romeo and Juliet this year. He wrote lots of stuff. I hope that you read a bunch of his stuff. Paradise Lost with John Milton, good in its own right, but especially if you ever read something like Frankenstein, where there's lots of connections there. Uh, Les Miserables, one of my favorite plays, musicals. There's a great movie version of it. Victor Hugo, he also wrote some other really important good works, but such, such a good story about the characters in Les Mis. William Blake wrote lots of poetry. He's also famous as an engraver. I happen to like some of the pictures that he has done, so threw him in here. William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coolridge, particularly Samuel Taylor, Taylor Coolridge's version of um, uh, the, the Ancient Mariner, or the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, excuse me, which is about shooting the albatross and hanging an albatross around your neck. Still an idea that we hold today the albatross around our neck is the sin that we have committed and, and, and it stains who we are and ruins who we are. Great po poem to read. Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, lots of other things. And then, since we did talk about parody, right, we got Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which you can pick up at your grocery store. But you don't get Pride and Prejudice and Zombies without Pride and Prejudice. So again, building off of these ideas. Silly, I know. One of my all-time favorites, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Uh, such, such a good story. It's usually in the 12th grade year, but I would recommend you just read it anyway. It's just an incredible story. Charles Dickens wrote many things, most uh, famously, of course, The Christmas Carol, a story that you probably read uh, or at least watch every Christmas time. Tale of Two Cities, one of his other famous works. Uh, the Bront sisters uh, wrote a number of things, Jane Eyre, um, Wuthering Heights. So anyway, interesting family connection of all uh, great writers. Oscar Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray, he also wrote many other things. He was a very smart man, kind of had a tragic life. I'll let you look up uh, the story of his life, but very a creative man and clever man and a uh, Anyway, Frederick Nietzsche, not so much an author in terms of writing stories or fiction, but he is definitely the guy who said God is dead and tried to come up with a whole new philosophy that we are still wrestling with in this day. What happens if you move, remove God from the discourse? You have only humanity left and only what I do matters. So take that for what that's worth. All right. Fyodor Dostoevsky, a great Russian uh, author, Crime and Punishment, one of his most famous works. 
uh, clearly dealing with themes of crime and punishment and guilt and sin and those kinds of ideas. Uh, Leo Tolstoy, another great Russian writer, War and Peace. I have not read this one. It is about like that long of a book. It is a huge, massive, like 1500 page book. I have not gotten to it yet. Someday, maybe. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, probably your junior year, you'll look at these guys uh, talking about the idea of transcendentalism and connecting to nature and getting back to nature, civil disobedience, my responsibility and connection to my government and what can I be forced to do and what will I reject and fight against, civil disobedience. Good, good story there. Uh, Emily Dickinson wrote poetry. Herman Melville, Moby Dick. I think we talked about Moby Dick. And he wrote another, a bunch of other stuff too. Frankly, I like some of his other stuff better than Moby Dick. But again, looking at parody, or this isn't so much a parody, but it's definitely a, a spin. We have Rail C, and by its China Mayville. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's definitely a play off of Melville. Um, but anyway, that's a, a, a Moby Dick type story. Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter. Again, this is literally a woman wears an A for adulteress because she had an affair. She had a relationship with a man other than her husband, and she has to wear the letter A. Her sin is tattooed upon her body, right? Quite literally, as well as metaphorically, in dealing with that idea. And guess what? She's actually really the good one in the story, and there are some really other rotten people. Um, you get the, the movie Easy A, perhaps you've seen it. It's coming from the idea of the Scarlet Letter. Edgar Allan Poe, I love his stuff, his poems, The Raven, and so many other things. He's written some short stories and some mysteries. I highly recommend you read some of his stuff someday. Oh, Mark Twain, great, great American writer, Huckleberry Finn, among others. Kipling, British writer, The Jungle Book. Other stuff, you might recognize the Jungle Book from all the movie adaptations. All right, H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds, The Time Machine, kind of that, a lot of the futuristic stuff. But this guy wrote it, like, before there was any kind of robots and technology. And uh, if you ever hear the story of the radio version of this play, which literally set the people into a panic because they're listening to the radio and they actually thought aliens were attacking Earth because of the, the production of the story was so... Uh, inventive and well done and creative. Virginia Woolf to a lighthouse. Ah, oh, Zora Neale Hurston, their eyes are watching God again. I think maybe your junior year you might touch on that one, but an author. The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald, <sighs> Ralph Ellison with The Invisible Man, James Baldwin, a writer of many different stories and things, Maya Angelou, I Knew Why the Cage Bird Sings. And the list goes on and on and on. There's absolutely no way that I could cover all the great books, but we can engage with them. So part of it is you can never stop reading because you can never get to the end of this list. It literally goes on and on and on. And every time you read a good story, it builds. And so you want to read that other good story. And then you want to read this other good story. And it just builds. And that's the pleasure of being a reader, of constantly reading, B building your experiences through literature, building your understanding of the world. So just read and read and read. Okay. So kind of ask you now, who else have you read that belongs on this list? Can you name any authors or books that should be included in this list from your own reading? What would you say, you know what, this book really impacted my life. This book really influenced the way I think or the kind of person I am. That's a great book. Even if it's not considered a classic. John Green is a great author. He writes about important ideas, specifically about youth and, and searching for who you are and what kind of person you want to be. And he often has a little bit of a love story in there as well. Uh, James Dasher, The Maze Runner. Some very fun stories. I like those. Got them on my bookshelf. But again, not a classic author. These are modern stories, but they're still dealing with many of the, the modern themes that we talk about in our world. Mary Lou, The Legend Series. Suzanne Collins, The Hunger Games. Great stories. Art Spiegelman, Mouse. It is the, uh, the cartoonified, illustrated version of surviving through the Holocaust, just like in the story Night that we read, 
So if you enjoy night, you might connect with mouse. The cats are Nazis, the mice are the Jews, and you got that cat and mouse kind of thing going on. It's also a, a, a very famous work, and I have it on my shelf, and you're welcome to borrow it if you would like. Okay, Diver Wimpy Kid, great, maybe for you. Captain Underpants, maybe it's great to you. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, 39 Clues series. Ah, anyone ever read Piggy and Gerald? I love reading those books with my kids. They are so fun and silly, and they're just wonderful to participate in. Even as an adult reader, I truly love Piggy and Gerald and their relationship. So all this to say is great stories, great literature. They don't have to be the old classics by dead people. They can be much more real, much more modern stuff that we can still connect with. So anyway, ah, we got Dr. Seuss. Movies, Dumb and Dumber. Maybe you've never seen this one. I know it's kind of old, but definitely people my age, we love this movie. It's so stupid and so funny. And those kinds of things, they connect with our culture. And when they connect with our culture and you hear these lines and you say the funniest line from your favorite movie, you are engaging in that conversation, whether you know it or not. You are saying, this is a funny part of who we are as people. Okay, books. I believe books are mirrors. They reflect you. Books are windows. They open it up to a new opportunity. They're a sliding door. You can walk in new worlds. Stepping stones allowing you to jump from one eye to the next, eye idea to the next. Overcoats. They wrap you up and the books will hold you and the idea will stay with you. Anchors. They lock us in to where we are at. And there are points in our lives where we go, I remember reading that book and I remember how I felt. Springboards, they send us flying off into other far off places and ideas. Escape hatches, we need to get away from the world. And so we find our own little pleasure reading and we hide out in our quiet corners. There are warm blankets, they are our flying carpets, they are beacons to new readers. If you know a reader, then you know they said things like, oh, I just finished this book, you should read it. Or have you ever read? Because I'm telling you, in the English department, we talk about this all the time, me and Mr. Arnold, especially in the hallways. We're like, oh, you read that book? I read that too. What you? We were just talking about Dune the other day. Dune should be on our list by Frank Herbert. The new movie uh, might be coming out sometime soon. I don't know. It was not coming out because of the pandemic. But Dune is a great science fiction uh, story that many people just latch on to in the sandworms. And if you love sci-fi, you should read Dune. Anyway, the point is this. Books really, really are important to who we are as a people. All right, so let's just review real quick what we read. Here are the stories and the short stories and the poems on uh, the left, the great conversation, the other stories we talked about throughout the year, starting with the Bible. Job specifically was referenced in the story Night. Oedipus Rex, the guy who gouged his eyeballs out. Cyrano de Bergerac, the long nose. The Prince, about... Once you have power, you do everything to hold on to that power and how terrifying that is. Merchant of Venice, the Pound of Flesh, Moby Dick and the Great White Whale, Uncle Tom's Cabin and uh, the desire to, uh, you know, be free for one, certainly, you know, freedom and fighting for freedom, but also just that Christian love, that Christian um, ideal of relationship and connection. To Kill a Mockingbird, which I know we didn't read, but you're going to get to watch the movie. And anyway... That's just kind of a real quick reminder of the stories that we've gone over this year. Interlopers, Necklace, Scarlet Ibis, Blues Ain't No Mockingbird, Seventh Man of Mice and Men, Night, Romeo and Juliet, some of the poems we read. And then, of course, we just finished off with the short story, There Will Come Soft Rains. Whew. You guys, that's a lot. And I wish we could have done more. Man, I wish we could do so much more. All right. So... Why do I care about reading? I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it a couple more. It connects us to our human experience. I have never been a girl who lived in China and immigrated to the United States, but I can read a story about that. I have never been someone who's gone to Mars, but I can read a story about what that adventure might be like. I don't know what it's like to be a captain 
or to be a, a you know a, a stellar baseball player. I don't know what it's like to have one of my parents die when I'm a child, but stories show us this kind of world that will never ever live, and they help us see life through a bigger, broader lens. All right, so themes, going through them real quick. And I had a heck of a time trying to get this PowerPoint slide made. So if there's mistakes, whatever. Uh, selfishness versus friendship. Remember, they got trapped under the tree. They were enemies, and they became friends, and then they got eaten by wolves. The necklace certainly talks about marriage. So you have to think, what kind of marriage do you want someday? What's an ideal marriage? Theirs wasn't a great marriage. He was a great husband. She not a great wife. Love, arrogance versus humility. She was definitely arrogant. Okay, and look how it turned out for her and her beauty. And she was so focused on that. Scarlet Ibis, family for sure. The relationship of brothers and mom and dad. And Doodle says, I wish we could all marry each other and stay together forever. But of course, love is a part of that, but also the malice. And the brother says how love and hate flow out of the same heart right next to each other. They are parallel emotions. And sometimes we are the most evil to the people we love the most. Scarlet Ibe is such a tragic story and the selfishness that came with that brother. Blues ain't no mockingbird. Great story. Remember, whack, the proper way to use a hammer and knock that bird right out of the sky. Talk about family for sure and how third cousin twice removed we just picked up and granny and no mom and dad and how some families don't look like a mom and dad and two brothers and sisters, right? The story of privacy. Tell that man to get off my lawn, right? Let's get out of here. Seventh man, about the tidal wave that comes. Certainly uh, nature is a part of that. I should have added that. But the theme of friendship, the theme of fear, and how it just completely captivates our narrator. And he can't do anything because he's so afraid. And the memory haunts him for most of his adult life. And how you have memories, and some of them might haunt you. You might have fears that debilitate you. How you might have a friendship, but have a terrible loss that lingers with you for decades and decades, as it did with the seventh man. Of Mice and Men, we all love that story. Certainly friendship, George and Lenny. Uh, I hope you'll never forget George and Lenny. But also loneliness, with Curly's wife being lonely. We had Candy being lonely. We saw Crooks being lonely. And they're all struggling and striving for that friendship. And so we're watching them and we're thinking, what are my friends like and how can I be a better friend and how can I reach out to those that are lonely? Night, the Holocaust, about family and how Ellie wants to stay with his father through the whole time, but survival, for sure. How far can you actually be pushed? How far through the snow? How, how much terror can the human body take? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Doesn't make it right, but it's part of it. Faith. Hanging on to your faith. Why do you believe? Ellie says he gave up his faith in God. What kind of God allows this kind of horrible evil? A question you have to ask yourself. Anti-Semitism, not really a theme, but definitely an important idea in that story. Romeo and Juliet, love at first sight. The general idea of love, youthful foolishness. Were they, was it fate and destiny that controlled their lives? Or was it bad decisions and where do we balance that? How much responsibility do you have in your life? Oh, with poetry, with the listeners, that was certainly just the idea of mystery. Uh, do not go gentle into the good night. It's about life. Um, we had, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Hamilton Green and Elsa Wortman and the idea of good versus evil and, and who's at fault there. Uh, Papa's Waltz, family fun or is it abuse? And you have to make up your mind. There will come soft rains, the idea of humanity and what happens when humanity is gone and how tragic that would be, how nature and humanity are connected or disconnected and what responsibility do we have and should we try and protect nature or is nature just fine on its own and should we just eliminate humanity and let the world do its world thing? And then we ended with there will come soft rains, which was the idea of humanity and technology. And I told you I had some trouble with these things. Humanity and technology, similar to the poem, and how do humans and technology interact? And as our technology gets more and more advanced, uh, does it matter if we're around? Does it matter if we have any part to play in the world? 
I know that's covering a lot. I want to pause here. These are the journals that we have written throughout the course of the year. I don't know if you realize that you might not have actually paid attention to the pattern here, but friendship, thankfulness, joy, loving, peace, faithfulness. I asked you to write uh, journal responses on how you interact with these ideas and how you see them in your world. Again, these are the themes that connect our humanity, that make us who we are. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we end this very long, troublesome year of the pandemic learning and hybrid learning and being at home and being disengaged from each other and being isolated from so many other people, friends and family that we know and love, you have to consider what is your purpose? Who are you? What kind of person do you want to be? Not just your job. Your job is important. But, but beyond your job, you can still be a plumber and a thinker. You can still be a, uh, a garbage man and a lover and a, someone who appreciates art and beauty. Okay? It doesn't matter what job you have. It's the person you are. You can be a family man or woman where you have your own kids and you spend time with them. Are you going to spend time with your brother and sister? Are you going to forgive your enemy? Those are the ideas that we talk about in literature and we connect over time and we watch other people. And it's this thread going back thousands and thousands of years and we grab that thread and we pull it. We just get more and more excited. The more we pull, the more we see, the more we experience, the deeper our connection to our world. Don't be on the surface. Don't just be a TikToker. TikTok is fun. Don't just be a YouTuber. YouTuber is fun. But don't just be a surface person who's only connected in five second little sound bites. Don't just be a Twitter reader of 200 characters. You're not going to get to know a person through that. Don't just be an Instagrammer where you just scroll through picture after picture after picture and you never stop to gaze and think and appreciate and wonder. Be a wonderer. Be an imaginer. Be a thinker. Be a reader. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want to impress upon you. I know, I know. You're thinking like, come on, Mr. DeClerc, English sucks. All we do is read books and write papers. I get it. I really do understand. It's not a lot of fun. But I think it's so important. Yes, I know math is important and science is important and robotics is important and history is important. But what is technology without humanity. That's what the soft, There Comes Soft Rains is asking. Does it matter if we have the most impressive technology in the world if we have nobody to experience it with? I know I'm biased, but I think our stories, our personal stories and the stories we read are by far the most important thing for us to engage with. So all I can do here is leave you with this question. What is your purpose? Who are you? We started at the beginning of the year by talking about how big you are. You are a special creation. You are a mind, a body, a person with characteristics. You have things that you love and things that you hate. You have interests. You are a big, important, and special person. You are also one out of six billion people. And the hard, sad truth is, frankly, nobody cares about you. You might have 100 years on this earth, and when you die, no one's going to remember you. You might have children and grandchildren that remember you for what? Another 50 years? Out of thousands and thousands of years, someone might remember your name for maybe 200 years? Maybe you'll do something significant and important, awesome. We might remember your name for a thousand years, but... but but when we remember you, what are we going to remember you for? What kind of impact are you going to live, leave on those that you know and love? Oh, the great conversation. That's all I can say, ladies and gentlemen. Engage in it. When you're here for summer school, when you come back next year and the year after that, when you go on to college, yes, doing the classes can be a drag. Doing the homework can be a drag. But try and find the joy. Try and find that meaning that can allow you to connect to it in a deeper, more important way. I know. I wasn't a super deep thinker going through high school. I was not having these thoughts. But frankly, nobody was teaching me to think like this. I'm hoping to offer you another way to consider it. Okay? 
engage in the great conversation. Find people who will share in your interests and thoughts that you can connect with. All right. I think that's all I've got. So, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for now. Bye.